So on video 9 of Revit to Real, what we're going to look at next is expanding past the lower level of um, the initial exported models that we sent to the printer. For instance, um, this quadrant right here. And beginning to move these pieces up vertically so that we can print out um, additional pieces to stack one on top of the other to complete the model. Um, a model like this, professionally speaking, you know, what I typically would do is, um, as a design process and a communication process, just built into an overall budget, I would probably work through exporting this lower level, um, the six uh, pieces uh, that we originally had. On a student project, on an academic project, um, I would absolutely, you know, you're going to need to complete the entire model. And to do that is quite a bit of, of additional time if the different pieces, you know, change as they're going up vertically, as this project does. So the, the cost implication of doing that definitely gets um, a little bit trickier if you're a professional office. It's at that point that I would definitely start not including something like that as part of a basic cost structure, but that would be, you know, to complete a model like this after those six base pieces, I think definitely is an additional fee. Um, again, the process, while it's going to take a little bit of time, both to print things out and then to put things together to get them stacked correctly, it gives you that opportunity of a model where you can lift the roof off or the second level off to see the interior pieces. And then the other thing that's really nice about where this process is moving is um, it's replicable. You know, so if I decide at some point in time I need two of these models, it's as simple as printing the pieces back out again or printing each piece out twice as I'm moving through it. So to develop the, the model further and beginning to include the rest of it, let's just take a look at this particular view. So the thing that I don't want to move on my section boxes are the sides. I want to keep each of those six base pieces together and I want to start moving these pieces up vertically. Um, and I already have this set up a little bit in this view, but what I'm going to do to walk you through the process to show you conceptually how it works is I'm going to say duplicate view. Again, I'm going to keep with my naming convention, rename, ZZ export, and then I would put level X, whatever your level is, and then however many pieces you need to divide that level into to get things to print correctly. So with that in mind, once I've renamed, I do exactly what I was doing horizontally, and that is I move the section box up, deselect it, reselect the section box, and then I'm going to move this piece vertically to a location that makes sense. So for instance, I might choose to print all the way up through the base of that first level because I still have several of these walls left. So in this particular case what I'm going to do is send this file to MakerWare and actually flip it upside down through the print process or before just before the print process. So let's take a look at that really quick. So what I'm going to do is from here add-ins STL exporter and let's call this export level X base 2. So we'll open up a new version of MakerWare, add the file in, export level X base 2. I'm going to move it to the platform, apply my scale factor, and then I'm going to use the turn tool to flip the model so it's basically printing the base first so that is finish floor of the second level first and then it's going to print the walls coming down to meet with the walls essentially that we're growing up. Think of it as stalactite versus stalagmite I suppose. So this file then is ready to send and ready to go and then I'll simply start gluing those top pieces and bottom pieces together. So what that starts to look like inside of Revit, if you look at this export level 2, I have 1, 2, 
three. So that is that that's primarily the walls on the second level. And if you notice, they're not attached to anything. Um, you know, there's no base there. So any entourage that I want, like the beds, chairs, things like that, you'll notice I have I have those pushed all the way up and adjacent to the walls so that they print out connected to the walls. Things like these that are floating in the middle, um, those actually adhere to um, the raft. So this wall is really easy to peel up. Those guys, um, they're just pretty much gone. And then lower walls like this, so this is the handrail for that upper level. I simply peel that off and glue it on uh, as a second step. Mid-level three, so this is the beginning of the roof portion. And then export to top, so that's the final piece of the vertical roof. So what I do to keep this stuff organized, because it does get a little bit tricky, is I have my ZZ model page. And if you'll notice, uh, one of them's already a little out of whack. Here we go, just put it back in place. Deactivate view. What I do is I go ahead and stack these and print these pages out so that I kind of know what I'm working with and I can keep all of the model pieces organized. And so this is going to print out, you know, at a similar scale to your model um, because these are all 16th inch views from a 3D axonometric viewport. So how I br start bringing those in, um, these are my level twos. So let's double check. Right now my scale is set to an eighth inch. So I want to change each one of these to a sixteenth of an inch. And once I have them changed to a sixteenth of an inch, the next thing that I do is I set up the exact same quadrant for each one, which I know is going to be this northwest quadrant. And I do that using the view cube so that everything works really well. So um, I bring those in to the page right here simply by dragging and dropping starting with export view 2. And when you have a few things on the page that begin to be a little bit tricky to organize, um, there's a little bit too much of a desire for it to snap to everything. But if you can find the vertical line, and hopefully I can get it to show up again, the little vertical dash line right there, that's going to let you know that you're stacking your views up correctly. And then what I'm doing on screen is just using the up and down arrow to move them relatively close together. So once I have that, I can simply drag the names of each view to a location to get them to read a little bit better. Which moving the uh, names of views is always a little bit tricky inside of Revit to do that. You know what I do is select only the title when I want to move the title. If I want to change the lead line, you select the view itself and then you can use the grips. So let's move just the title and snap it into place, the window, and then use the grip. Last one, second to last one actually. And then the last thing that I'll do a, a lot of times just so I can keep things in line is I'll use a detail line and then a hidden line that helps me set my construction lines on how each of these pieces is put together. So I can kind of run those edge to edge. And then you can pretty quickly see which things are actually not lining up well, they actually are. Okay, yeah. That back edge to this back edge. Let's draw one more line in for that. Detail lines, hidden line. Let's use this back corner right here. 
and that should drag down right on top of everything. So it's this little guy right here is the culprit. It needs to slide over right to there. So that gets me the construction lines that are connecting all those pieces together. That's the old school method of how we used to do exploded axonometrics inside of Revit before they gave us a button for that. So this page allows me to set my model pieces on it, things like that, keep everything situated, keep everything straight as I'm building all the pieces together.